Okay, well done. Thank you. Item 14. We're going west. John. John Hutton. Is John here? Good man, John. Kia ora and welcome. The Auckland Council submissioned the Māori Affairs Committee on Te Kawarau a Maki. Claims Sediment Bill. Very big for the iwi. Uh, so we have got a recommendation there. It is oh, well received in hindsight as you were. Councillor George, you want to move? Yep, I'll move. And second will be Councillor Benny H. Uh, and uh, John, anything you want to alert us to or... Should we be blissfully happily for Kawarau and Maki? I think blissfully happily. Um, blissfully I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions. Good man. Councillor Chris. Yeah. Um, Mr Chairman, I think this is the first time that John has appeared before the governing body and I would just like to commend him for the work that he's undertaken and to say that I think as a council we're very privileged to have his experience being brought to the council table on uh, treaty settlement issues. So um, it's, it's re really with pleasure that uh, I see John here today. Excellent. I'm happy, oh, it's moved, that's uh, it, it is moved, yeah. Councillor Chris. Um, Councillor Ross. Yeah, sorry, I didn't see in the fine point uh, print, the Marae site that Waitakere indicated or offered to Karamaki at Tehanga, where, where is that at? That um, sits outside of the treaty settlement uh, framework. Um, I understand that that question is really in abeyance. Um, uh, it's not something I have uh, a lot of knowledge about, but I think the resolution, the previous resolution, uh, to make that available still stands, uh, and that'll be a matter for Te Kawaraumaki and Auckland Council to work through. Thank you. I was just going to answer that Penny question. H? I was just going to done? comment on that. Um, we're working through that. Te Waka Angamoa are doing some excellent work Good. with Te Kawarau Amaki and the Bethel Stihinga um, community. Marae is certainly still under discussion. And as has been explained, it's entirely separate from this treaty settlement issue. Okay, very good. Excellent. Okay, now we've got Councillor George. Hang on, just, just wait, please. So, um, I've well, got a few, hang on, hang oh, sorry, on, sorry. sorry I, I just got a few hands floating, so I want to get a batting order here. So, I've got Councillor Linda, Councillor Wayne, I think. Did Wayne, did you yes, please. Wayne? Anyone else who wants to have a go? Sorry, Councillor Penny. Okay, so Councillor George first. Well, this, this um, submission, which is set out in the detail set out in the report. Uh, acknowledges the importance of the settlement to Te Kaura Maki and the people of Auckland, acknowledging, acknowledges the ongoing relationship between Auckland Council and Te Kaura Maki, and sets out aspects of the settlement which affects Auckland Council, particularly the development of options at Te Onikiri Tia Point, also known as Bomb Point at Hobsonville, just across from Beach Haven where I was where I grew up and know this area very well. So this is a significant uh, moving forward in relation to another treaty settlement. And uh, I also thank John for the work that he's doing in this new position. Thank you, Your Worship. Excellent. Te Oni Kiritia. Bomb Point. Why do they call it Bomb Point, John? Because it was the bomb dump. Got some bomb shelters there. Um, it oh, was it's a, literally a bomb point. It, it certainly was. The um, uh, Built during the uh, Second World War, and um, a lot of the shelters still stand as, as significant um, features in their own right. So this will test you. The Oni Kiritia. What does that mean in English? I wouldn't uh, venture a translation here. I'm, I'm pretty, it's pretty prosaic, I understand. Prosaic. That's what we like. Uh, right, uh, next we've got Councillor Linda. Thank you. Can we just clarify? So um, we're looking to have the Esplanade vested in Council? The Esplanade's already vested in Council in ownership. Um, there's the balance of the point there um, is under discussion or negotiation uh, presently between Council and the Hobsonville Land Company. For purchase? For purchase. And so, okay, well, yeah. All right, so just some clarification. My father was the officer commanding of this 
what was actually just called Bomb Dump um, when I lived there. Um, and it was, the actual ordinances were blown up there um, and he has said he could never sign that off as completely safe. Um, so he was asked to do that and he said he couldn't. So it's good that it'll be a park because we don't want anybody building on top of that. But I'm sure it's probably fine, but um, no one can actually take the risk. That was I a significant playground. Of park. In, yeah. Now we're nervous. So it, it definitely was. It definitely was. Um, as well, no one's filming this. It's an armourer's playground. So, no, well, hang on. well, it's true. That's, that's the truth. So, um, so, so in, in when you say, just to clarify, so the actual land that will be um, handed over to Te Kaurau Maki um, will then be handed over to council to keep as one parcel. Is that what you're saying? That's not what I'm not trying quite. To there, there are two portions of land. It's easier in the clause. 2,800 square metres, so um, a relatively small portion that will be vested in Te Kaurau Maki through the Treaty Settlement Bill, mm -hmm. and that's for the marae. The balance of the point um, presently is Crown land, there will be a right of first refusal <coughs> to Te Kaurau Maki for that land, but with a very specific exemption that would allow council to acquire the land for the purpose of a park. Um, if council decides to acquire that land for the purpose of a park, the right of first refusal stays with the land. So at any future date, and we're talking up to 170 years, council decides to divest itself of that park, then Te Kaurau Maki would have the first right to, to purchase, purchase before it was put on the market. Um, it, it sounds fine. complicated, but no, it's, it's, a, it's, like it's a standard that process. That's fine. Thank you, Councillor right. Wayne. Sure. Um, I'd just like to acknowledge Te Karau Amaki. They were one of the early tribes in the Auckland region, and their settlements were extensive from coast to coast. Later tribes came along and now occupy significant parts of um, their uh, area. So I would hope that the settlement process acknowledges that. And as much and all as there's a settlement over land, is there um, recognition of their extensive previous settlement of, of Auckland and the various locations you? that they occupied, including, for example, Whangapra and, and other parts of the region? Uh, the Te Kauraumaki Claims Settlement um, Bill and the accompanying deed of settlement um, uh, are pretty extensive on my reading. They include cultural redress through the Waitakere's and across to Tiritiri Matangi Island. Um, there are various statements in the historical account and background section of the deed that acknowledged Kaurau Maki's history. Uh, so that, that is borne out okay. in the um, settlement itself. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Wayne. Uh, last question to Councillor Penny W. Yes, thank you very much, John. And I'm sorry we need to catch up about um, Parakai. Um, the, the transfer of the Riverhead Forest, has, has, has that actually taken place yet? No, that, that will take place when the bill itself is passed oh, and uh, by Parliament and when a date called the, the settlement date takes place, which uh, tends to be a month or two after uh, yep. royal assent is given. It's just that I'm, um, I, I'm just aware that there is some hope from Te Kauraumaki about some uh, development going on there, maybe a special housing area or something, and having been embroiled in the tiara issue, um, and now, of course, as you will be aware, um, the mining rights of, in Woodhill, um, with the closing of the sand mining for um, our ex-Deputy Mayor, Mr Steele, <laughs> as you'll be aware, Brenda's uh, father-in-law, oh, yeah. uh, that's, go, you know, people haven't sort of realised that sort of detail of some of these settlements, and I just hope that we're not going to end up with any fish hooks. Um, I, I couldn't advise on that except to note that the um, land would be vested into Kauramaki subject to the Crown Forest licence that's currently running over it and that tends, they, they tend to have a, a life of about 35 years. So if there was a relationship between uh, Kauramaki and the uh, licence holder and they came to some development agreement to forego aspects of that licence early, that would create a development opportunity for Te Kauraumaki and obviously that would then evoke all of the usual 
planning and, and procedurals, procedural matters that Auckland Council would be involved in. I, I, it's just that I've, through you, Mr Mayor, I've, I've sort of heard mumblings of wanting to put some sort of um, building on on that forest, and, and of course it would be outside the rub at the moment, but I think it was part of the unitary plan discussion, so just be aware of that. Got it. Well done, uh, Councillor Penny W. Uh, no other comments. Uh, it's moved and seconded. All those in favour say aye. 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 It's passed.